as time goes by, you start to forget about things that happened in history. I think it was important to save the locker because I didn't want Pat to be forgotten. He was pretty legendary just for being the guy he was, being true to himself, challenging people around him, never being dull or just taking things for granted or being complacent. He was always searching for knowledge and, and doing fun experiential things. Yeah, I miss him really bad. The choices that he made spoke volume of who he is and who he was. Every moment meant something. He tried to maximize every moment. Everything Pat did was all in. We need the ball back here. We need to stop it. Saying anything is just a waste of our time. I mean, we need to just shut up, go to work. Pat Tillman, what can I say? Just all around good guy, you know? Not cocky, very confident, soft-spoken, you know? Like to sing Desperado, <laughs> like that movie. Just genuine. Tell me about the game, today's uh, game. I'm not much of a spokesman. That's okay, you're an ASC guy, right? Yeah. Yeah, I understand you hit pretty hard. No, it's not me, different guy. I so. Immediately, I, I kind of liked him. He had long hair, he didn't dress nice. He was just such a unique, genuine dude that people, you know, uh, were endeared to him. He was a flower child, if you will. You know, of course, at the time, I didn't have any clue that he would go on to become the hero that he became, but, you know, he was a different type of dude. I think Pat probably deserved flip-flops and a surfboard somewhere in some Oakley shorts and a, a real nice golden hair, and that's it. Like, playing football never seemed like he should be there. Like, it just, until he put on his pads. When he put on his pads, a different person showed up. He really upped the competitiveness during practice. I mean, rookies don't hit receivers in, in, in OTA days, but he would lay some wood on a guy or like put an elbow in him and get in fights. And, and he wasn't doing that to be vicious or mean. He was doing that because he only knew one speed. He hit anything that moved. If the drill was half speed, he went full speed. He didn't care if he started a full fight. And he did several times start many fights at training camp because he was going at a different speed and intensity than you were supposed to go as a player. Passion is kind of an important word for me. I, I want to push myself, you know, I, I don't necessarily want to be, I think you got to get out of your comfort zone if you're kind of comfortable all the time. I, you know, you're, it's like if you're skiing, if you're not falling, you're not trying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I, I, I kind of want to push myself a lot. You look at someone like him who is similar to me, we were too small, too slow, not smart enough, all these excuses for why we shouldn't be there, yet we just, you know, we threw that all aside and said, yeah, we're supposed to be here. Thank you very much, it means a lot to me, and uh, that's it, thank you. He had a humility about him uh, and selfless leadership that um, he brought to the training facility every day and he'd bring to the community, and he really did care, and I saw him as a person that was gonna do great things with his life. This just in, we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed. Believed to be a plane crashed into the South Tower. We had some breaking news. I just news. saw another plane coming in from the side. You did, I did. That was out of Yes, and that's you. the second explosion. Well, yesterday, in the face of all this, where were you? How'd you find out? How'd you handle it? Well, I was, uh, I was sleeping, and I got a call from my brother. I'm sure like a lot of people, I was just, I was laying there, and I get a call from my brother, and he's, you know, get your ass up, turn the TV on, and I, and I ran outside, turned it on, and I think the first image I saw was them showing that second plane coming in and, you know, and whacking that second tower. And I, you know, I was just uh, probably like everybody else, dumbfounded. What we do playing in the NFL, he goes, we're worthless, we're actors. He goes, that means nothing. You, this, is, this is so much bigger than that. It was just six months after 9-11, and it was only three weeks after he got married to Marie, his high school sweetheart, uh, and it was about one week after they got back from their honeymoon. I was coming into the gates, and he was going out, I say, hey, Pat, how you doing? What's up with your contract? He said, bro, I'm probably gonna go to the military. I said, what? He said, yeah, I'm gonna go to the Army and be arranged with my brother. I said, what? You, you gonna do what? 
He was like, yeah, I'm gonna probably go. Yeah, I think that's the best thing, man. It's a, it's a lot going on. I wanna serve my country. That's what I'm gonna do. I say, brother, God bless you. I remember getting a call from Mike Devlin, who was my center in my rookie year, and now was a coach with the Cardinals. He said, hey, you gotta call Pat. He's, he's about to do something that, you know, I don't know if he should do this. It's, you know, he's given up all this money and given up the game, and I don't know, you should give him a shout. And I, I kind of chuckled because I was like, if he's made this decision and his wife hasn't changed his mind, then what good am I gonna be to, to go try to change his mind? I'm not gonna piss him off before he goes to fight for our country. And I gave him a hug and told him I love him. And, Hey, be safe out there, man, because there was no change in his mind. You know, my, my great-grandfather was at Pearl Harbor, and a lot of my family has given up, you know, has, has gone and fought in wars, and, and I really haven't done a damn thing. They showed me the clip of him saying, you know, I, I haven't done anything for my country. You know, what have I done? I play football. And clearly he was inspired to, to go do this. He's all in. He believed in what he believed in and uh, believed it very strongly and uh, acted on what his beliefs were. A lot of people have beliefs, but they don't act on them, and uh, he did, no matter what he was doing. You don't realize how great a life we have over here. Even, even as, as athletes, we bitch and moan every now and again about this or that. And if we ever just, you know, t times like this, you stop and think about just how good we have it. He turned down riches and fame for sacrifice for country. I mean, you just don't hear about that often. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't think you'll, you'll hear about it again. You know, I mean, that's just a, a special person doing something that most people would never do. You know, people always said, oh, Pat's too brave. You know, nothing will ever happen to him there. Like, almost like he's, you couldn't hurt the guy. And I thought just the opposite. It's like, that guy is gonna be at the first of every line. He's not gonna play it safe. He's not gonna be careful. I always, I just thought, God, just, you know, not, let nothing happen to him, because I know he's gonna approach this like he has everything else in his life. In sports, we have a tendency to overuse terms like courage, bravery, and heroes. Then someone special like Pat Tillman comes along and reminds us what those terms really mean. I remember I was on the golf course. I was in Dallas on the golf course, and I got a text and said, hey, man, Pat Tillman just, um, just died in Afghanistan, and I just couldn't believe it. You know, it was a jaw-dropping moment. You know, couldn't believe it, but um, like I said, there's nothing, no other way to explain uh, his, his, um, his approach other than uh, heroic. You know, losing Pat, someone who you actually played with and you're close to, it's, you know, it's tough because you're a brotherhood, you know, you are one of few and you look out for each other. America has lost an honorable man. While many of us may be blessed to live a longer life than Pat did, few of us will ever live a better one. Pat was the guy you could go to with anything. I've been around the Cardinals my entire life. My dad was an athletic trainer for the team for 42 seasons. So I was literally born into this organization. My first year in the broadcast department was 2001, which was Pat Tillman's final year of playing. He always looked out for everyone, whether you were a teammate or, you know, a radio guy. Jim has probably more appreciation for Cardinals history than anybody I know. He's, he's the biggest Cardinal fan I know. It doesn't surprise me that he would be the one to step in and to take charge. I think it was important to save the locker because someone's gonna want it. He's single-handedly responsible for saving that locker from the wrecking ball. It's the day after the Super Bowl. Kind of slow around the facility, so I come over here to Oregano's just to get a normal lunch. So I order a slice and a salad and I'm waiting for the food, so I'm scrolling through Twitter, I see a tweet by Darren Urban that alerts me to the renovation starting at our Tempe facility. So I freak out, there's a photo with a destroyed locker on the ground. So I had ordered my lunch, it hadn't come yet, and I'm like, I gotta get out of here. So I throw $20 down onto the table, and I'm out of there. I just run to my car, drive down, get to the facility, run through the parking lot, run through the auditorium, the weight room, the training room, step into the locker room, the carpet is all torn up, 
the glue from the carpet is there and it rips my shoe off my foot. So I'm hopping around the corner to see two lockers on one wall and about four lockers on the other. There's a guy with a saw walking directly for Pat Tillman's locker. I said, wait, 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 wait. Don't cut that one out. He looks at me like I'm nuts. I said, we have to cut this one out carefully and set it aside. That's Pat Tillman's locker. You know, the cliche, if you cut somebody open, they bleed cardinal red, that's, that's Omo. So it was fitting that, you know, he would be the one that has his finger on the pulse of that and in the moment immediately recognizes how significant this is to preserve. You'll notice some significant changes to the locker room. We've got 70 brand new lockers and it's a, it's a great feeling inside that locker room. And I want to give a shout out to one of our longtime staffers, Jim Omohundro, who's back here, for catching the opportunity during the demolition. We decided to preserve Pat Tillman's locker and tell his story. That locker that you see encased as basically a museum piece right now, he used to sleep in that locker between practices. I think that's what the team hopes players glean from that when they walk by. Uh, are you the best football player you can be? Are you the best American you can be? Are you getting the most out of your life, period? What can you give back to Arizona, your teammates, and the community? You know, there's plenty of public stuff that people can go see, the statue at the stadium, the number in the Ring of Honor, et cetera. But to have something, I think, that's just just for players and other employees of the team, I think that's a really cool thing. It's just a sense of what this team is about because Pat Tillman was all about team. And if you can walk past that and not get something inside of you turning, we got some issues. It's a reminder as a player that's leaving out of the locker room going to the practice field. Here's someone who was dedicated, committed, to excellence. Drive by the stadium every day for training camp and, and see his monument outside, um, to see his name in the Raptors, to be able to walk to the lunchroom and see his jersey um, and his locker there. And it just makes me proud that uh, I could be an Arizona Cardinal. When you get to that spot, it's almost a universal reaction. People just stop and the conversation ceases. Everything about his legacy is, is unbelievable to me. So to be here, um, to be walking the same halls that he walked and to, be, to see his locker was special for me. He embodied what it meant to be a Cardinal, and you've carried that torch for much of your career. No, you I wouldn't reflect on that. I wouldn't say I carried the, the torch. You know, Pat Tillman is, uh, he's, he's, he's on a much, much, much higher level than to anybody, you know, that's ever played here in terms of their, their contribution to society. You know, paying the ultimate price, you know, for our, for our freedoms here in the United States. I think Pat's legacy lives in a lot of people, not just within the organization, but I think it hits home a lot harder because uh, every player that comes through there, every coach that comes through there, even every person that works in the organization ultimately knows he is part of it. It's about selfless commitment and leadership and, um, and about giving back. And he was, he was somebody who gave to his teammates, he gave to his team, he gave to the community, he gave to his family, he also gave to his country, everything. People know Jake Plummer, they know how close they were, and I think Jake has a good handle on the kind of person Pat was and the kind of way he would look at things in life because we can't ask Pat anymore. His locker alive and his, his uh, leg, legend alive there, it's telling the players to like, live your trueness, be who you are and like, hey, you know, don't, don't go against the grain just because you wanna go against the grain, but if you have a feeling and it's a thought and it's something you believe in and if it's against the grain, do it and trust yourself because Pat was like that. He believed in himself so much so that he did something that no one could fathom he would do and go, give up millions of dollars to go fight for our country. Well, for Pat, it was just life. That was what life was about, was doing what you believed and, and living your life. What would you want your parents and your coaches and teammates saying about you? 
I don't know, maybe that pa the passion word I talked about. I don't know. Maybe that that's kind of important to me that I that I that I tried. You know, that I was. Um, I think everybody, every player, you know, you know, you you want to. You want to kind of lay it down, you know. You want people to think that you are, you know, you're kind of selling out for for the team or selling out for football or whatever. And that's, you know, kind of. I don't, you know, want to be dramatic. I don't know, but that's that's what I that's what I'd like. You that's play for the heart. Kind of, yeah. The heart thing is kind of kind of important to me.